today we're talking about the color wheel hey class welcome back mr g here today we're going to be talking about the color wheel going over a couple aspects of it five things you need to know about the color wheel is what we're covering all right the color wheel so today's topic we're going over the five things that you need to know about the color wheel that i use in my class and that you guys are going to need for some future projects so today let's go ahead and start off with the basics all right color wheel basics number one primary colors primary colors are the colors that are found in nature which is red yellow and blue basic basic stuff now from those we have the secondary colors the secondary colors are your green purple and orange those colors are made by taking two of the primary colors combining them together to create the rest of the colors that we have in the spectrum now one caveat to this is white and black those are considered neutral colors and thus they're not really on the color wheel however uh, you use those for making tonal changes in your colors so white gives you all your tints that gives you the lightness of the color so like your sky blues your ro your pinks your pastel yellow basically all the pastel things anything that's like eastery themed that's a tint of some assortment the other end of the spectrum is your shades the black is added to a color to give all the shade elements now shades are used to show the darkening of the colors are really good to those are really good for contrast of an image so that we can create those sh those depths of a shadow that create more structure to what we're looking at uh, case in point those are your your dark blood reds favorite color your dark dark blues all the darker colors have some sort of a black element added to them to give it that shade then you have everything else that's in between which is your tonal range tint so, is on the white side of the spectrum shade is on the black side of the spectrum your grays are your tones those are your tonal changes now let's go ahead and talk about the colors that i'm using to paint all of these pieces with now me i have a reeves watercolor kit they come in these little paint tubes like this and i'm only using these six to make all the paints that i'm using today so when we're watching me make the paints so you know what i'm using uh on the yellow end of the spectrum we have lemon yellow and medium yellow so i have my so i have my light and dark yellow then we have our reds which are we have brilliant red and crimson red gives us the dark and the lighter different shades of the red then we have our two blues which is ultramarine and thalo blue uh those we have just like this reason that we're using just those three primary colors is so that we can make all of our other colors i want you guys to be able to see the color science that we that we use to go into this i think that's an important thing for you guys to know now first off on our color perspectives are our i'm just going to be painting the color wheel but we're going to talk about monochromatic monochromatic is one color in the overall spectrum that we're using and we're just using that one color to create an entire piece of artwork from that one color now that one color does include black and white as i said before those are not on the color spectrum so they're used to give us the lightness of the color or the darkness of the color or the tonal changes in between that gives us all the different variances that we need into our painting but it covers just one color hence mono next we go into the analogous color schemes starts off with one of these now the analogous color schemes are your warm colors or your cool colors now i have a more modified version on my color wheel here reason that i'm having it modified is because i want to kind of structure just those specific colors together usually for me i like to say you're either using a primary or secondary color and then the two intermediate colors or tertiary colors on the sides of that uh, if i'm starting off with my blue as my main color from there i have a blue green or a blue purple those are the spectrum colors that i get for my mono for my analogous color scheme if you're stretching this for the warm colors that is your yellow your orange and your red those are perfectly fine to use the whole that whole spectrum for your analogous color schemes i like to fine tune mine a little bit more just because it gives a much more moody or structuralized piece because of that and you know me i teach high school so i want to try and give my kids a little bit harder time doing their stuff why because you know i'm evil i'm cool with that next we're moving into is complementary complementary is the colors that are across from each other on the color wheel now across from each other that is your yellow and purple your red and your green and your blue and your orange now you can mix these up and you can have a yellow orange and across from that is a blue green still works uh, blue green no blue purple yeah 
yellow orange or blue purple is across from each other on the color wheel and those are complementary colors as long as they are completely opposite of each other on the color wheel that's the complement now you see this a lot in sports teams why because it looks it's a good contrasting color dynamic uh these things really stick out really well and it's easy to identify and understand it uh visually it's just written it's our visual language that's what makes sense to us now for the complementary colors here, I'm using a yellow and a purple, and I wanna have those completely laced out so you guys can see how we're making those colors happen. Number four, triadic, intermediary, or tertiary. These three I kinda use interchangeably, even though they are slightly different from each other. Uh, the triadic are three colors that are completely equidistant from each other on the color wheel. Uh, now for my example, I have a yellow, orange, a red, purple, and a blue green because these are all equidistant colors from each other on the color wheel that meets the triadic this also falls into the intermediate and tertiary colors because all of those colors that i listed are colors that are not a primary color or a secondary color it's a hybrid of the two now always when we're talking about these we're using primary language first that is one thing that i try and instill in all my students which is say the primary color before the secondary color it's just a it's a formality so all primary language first, so red, purple, blue, green, that's how that kind of stuff works. Going into these colors, as I'm blending these pieces together, I'm using scraps that I've already made from other colors that I've already used. I'm just adding and tweaking the, the chemical composition just a little bit. Now the number one issue is when you're mixing all of these colors, you're running into the mud factor. And I use the mud factor as this. When you're mixing your all three primary colors together, your red, your yellow, and your blue all together, it cancels each other out and that gives you that color of mud which is just not pleasant or awesome and so you gotta be aware of that now if you need a good brown that's an easy one to fix now as i said this is all color science and that's because we're combining so many elements together now, now speaking of color science one of the things that i learned back in college so olden days is where we're making DIY black. So in our painter's kit, we had two main colors that we just kind of all blew through to get a super dense, rich black, which was our crimson red and our thalo green. Thalo green is like the darkest, richest green that we have in our palette. And then we also have that thalo blue, which I was telling you guys about earlier. You mix the those three colors together and you're pulling out the darkest colors, the darkest pigments, and you're going to get that nice, rich black. But it's so much more rich in its, in its structure that it looks better than true black. I prefer to make my own black just because I think it's a richer, more properly structured color. But then if I'm using white, when you're using white, some whites are built with a little bit of blue in the chemical composition, which is kind of opposite of what you're making the white for. So what do you use to counteract that, that, what, that blue and the white? You add a little bit of orange to cancel the blue that's in the white. We're not talking a lot. We're talking like the smallest little drop. It's just to make sure that you minimize any other color that could be off-putting in that white. Neutralize it by its complement, and it comes out really well. Complements are really, there's a lot of information there. And finally, that brings us to number five, which is split complementary. So going back to complementary for a second, colors across from each other on the color wheel. Complement of blue is orange. For a split complementary, we're gonna take one of our colors, blue and I'm going to split it on the other side. So instead of using orange, I'm going to use red orange and yellow orange. So instead of using the direct complement, I'm using the two neighbors on the side. That gives you, again, the full scope of the palette, gives you a lot of options to use and gives you something to play around with. So that gives it more color elements that are still within the same color family, but just slightly different. So, so just a small br brief overview on these colors. Again, hope that you guys understand the color science as I'm mixing these things together, because I think that's an important thing for us to see. It's important to see the color change chemically and again remember remember this is a chemical process so, awesome guys i hope that you guys got some of the fun out of today's lesson again i'm trying, trying to further engage all the chemical processes making color uh at not just a color thing but it's also a scientific thing and just having fun let's go ahead and wrap up class like we always do don't forget to like subscribe share and all the various platforms get the message out there to as many teachers and friends as we possibly can why because educating the masses is such a good thing if you guys had a question comment or concern during today's class raise your hand in the comments below happy to answer the questions from my classmates as always i will see you guys next class so until then i'm gonna go do some more painting i'll catch you guys later later guys